Happy Friday, everyone. James Hancock here. I'm back to review episode two of season two of Star Trek Discovery, an episode called New Eden. Now, I've been having a little bit of an internal debate over whether or not I should follow this show on my channel because, admittedly, I have a negative bias towards showrunner Alex Kurtzman. However, when I saw that Jonathan Frakes was going to be directing episode two, I decided that at least in the short term, I could look at this show with an open mind. Both as a performer as well as a director, Frakes is a member of the Star Trek elite. But what I really appreciate about him is that in recent years, Years, he's been more than happy to work as a hired gun directing episodes of both the Orville as well as Star Trek Discovery. He's also back in the director's chair for another episode of Discovery later this season. At any rate, it's been a wild week for Star Trek fans with so many people weighing in on what they thought about the season 2 premiere. I never thought I'd be exposed to so many different theories about Spock's incestuous feelings for his adopted sister, but that's where the show decided to go, so now we're stuck with that development forever. It reminded me a little bit of that scene in the Royal Tenenbaums where Richie's telling his dad about his feelings for his adopted sister Margot and how it's okay because they're not related by blood, and Gene Hackman replies with this classic line, well that's true, but it's still frowned upon. In any event, we'll see what Kurtzman in his infinite wisdom decides to do with this storyline later on. But before I get to my review, I do have one piece of news. The first three seasons of The Expanse are coming to Amazon on February 8th, the show's new home, and we'll be getting season four of that show later this year. But for everyone who got annoyed by my negative review of the season two premiere of Discovery, take a look at The Expanse. It's an amazing show, and you'll quickly realize just how much Discovery is failing to achieve its full potential. In my opinion, The Expanse is the strongest ongoing science fiction show. But as far as new Whedon is concerned, it was definitely an improvement over the previous episode. Anson Mount is starting to grow on me a little bit as Pike. Admittedly, there were still plenty of story beats and lines of dialogue that annoyed me, but overall, it's a pretty solid episode. Also, let me be clear, when I say something annoys me, that doesn't mean I'm on Twitter shrieking like a madman making all sorts of hyperbolic statements. Outrage culture completely, utterly disgusts me. I mean exactly what I say. When something annoys me, I simply snort in irritation, and then I move on with my life. And the revelation that Spock is in a psychiatric facility was one of those moments where I snorted, but I quickly moved past it and just tried to focus on the main plot of this episode, namely that the signals they've been tracing lead to a location 150 light years away. Pike gives the go-ahead to use the spore drive again, but what he doesn't know is that Stamets is not entirely sure that he won't stay on the other side if he bumps into Hugh again. And once they arrive at their destination, we're treated to a pretty standard Star Trek scenario where the team has to explore mystery, save the day, and debate the pros and cons of certain ethical gray areas on what is the best way to proceed. Problem solving has always been Star Trek's bread and butter, and Jonathan Frakes clearly understands that. Because after discovering a distress call for help that's been going for like 200 years, they decide to investigate the surface, and what they find is a human settlement that was transplanted from Earth by the Red Angel during World War III, before the days of War Tribe, which makes them technically a civilization where the Prime Directive should apply. The civilization has a few technological relics, but basically it's living without electricity. And because the colony includes so many descendants from different backgrounds, they basically combined all their different religions into one, a religion that includes imagery of the Red Angel. But back on the ship, Tilly's doing some experiments on the asteroid. She's basically trying to build a new interface for the spore drive so the stamets can be removed from the equation. She nearly kills herself, and then she spends the rest of the episode prancing around in a hospital gown. I'm sure her fans found these scenes absolutely hilarious, but personally, I'd rather drill a hole in my forehead than be subjected to any more comedy involving Tilly. In any event, the crew soon learns that New Eden is facing an extinction-level event due to these giant rings of radioactive debris that are about to collide with the surface. My question, however, is that was this event prompted in response to the Discovery's arrival as a way of testing their metal, or is this a foregone conclusion that the Red Angel predicted and basically manipulated Discovery into arriving to save the day? The fourth book of The Expanse deals with one of these situations where the planet's basically trying to shrug off what it regards as an invasive species. But either way, using the giant asteroid as a magnet, the Discovery manages to pull the debris away from the planet, save the day, hoorah. Back on the surface, the situation gets totally out of hand due to Jacob, who's a descendant of all the scientists that originally came to the colony hundreds of years ago, and he's basically been waiting for a day to confirm what his ancestors suspected all along, that Earth survived World War III and they're not alone in the universe. Burnham makes a pretty compelling case that Jacob deserves to be told the truth, but Pike wants to maintain their disguise. And Pike and Burnham have some relatively interesting debates this episode about religion versus science. But Pike ends up nearly getting killed by an accidental blast to the chest, but true to her promise, Burnham decides to maintain their disguise, and she tells the locals that she's going to basically pray for deliverance in the church before beaming back to Discovery. Everyone except Jacob is convinced that they've witnessed divine intervention. But once Pike's back on his feet, we get a pretty interesting conversation between Pike and Burnham where he thanks her for following orders, and she admits finally that she has seen the Red Angel. 
Furthermore, she makes a really convincing argument that returning to the surface to retrieve this old helmet with footage of the Red Angel would justify breaking the Prime Directive. All ends happily when Pike returns to the surface to confirm Jacob's suspicions. He makes a swap for the helmet, and in exchange, he gives Jacob a fuel cell that will basically resurrect their community. As suspected, the footage does bring Pike face to face for the first time with an image of the Red Angel. But as far as what's on the horizon, the teaser showed that Ash Tyler will be returning next episode, as well as a character that appeared to be Georges Yu. So in spite of my grievances towards Alex Kurtzman as a storyteller, in particular as a showrunner, for now at least the show continues to have me on the hook. But I have to admit that my interest in the show goes beyond just what's on the screen. Ideally, we should judge the show exclusively on its own merits. However, this weekly rivalry between Star Trek and the Orville is rapidly becoming my favorite spectator sport. And the only thing that can make this competition a little bit more interesting would be if Amazon suddenly decided to give us Season 4 of The Expanse a little bit early. I think at that point my brain would completely explode from oversaturation of science fiction, but at least we still do have that show on the horizon to look forward to. At any rate, that's all I have for now. If you want to talk some sci-fi, Star Trek, or whatever, you can always find me on Twitter at Colbrax, and there's a link down in the description below. But if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. I would really appreciate it. But I hope everyone has an amazing weekend. I'll be back at you all in the near future. Can't thank you enough for watching my video, but more importantly, as always, onwards and upwards.